Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about what happened in Brooklyn tonight. Adam Konatsky on his way to what looked like a good start. He had outlanded Robert Hellenius by more than 30 punches. Think about that. Going into the fourth round, right? He had a much higher connect percentage than Robert Hellenius. Also, Hellenius, taller fighter, stood too upright. Did not have an answer for Kanaki's, excuse me, Kanachki's body shots. You thought that all the body work Adam was doing early was going to pay off later in the fight. So then we get to the fourth round. You notice that neither fighter could slow the pace. You thought that that favored Konatsky. In other words, Hellenius doesn't have shootouts like this. So Konatsky has the home crowd. Konatsky's off to the higher volume start. Konatsky's the one landing the body shots that would pay dividends later. So you get to the fourth round. It's a Konatsky pace. Now Konatsky unbeaten going in make some mistakes. He gets hit with a short right hook and he goes down. The referee, who was otherwise excellent, wrongly calls that a slip. But understand, two people knew it wasn't a slip. Hellenius, who threw the short right hook, and Konatsky, who got hit by it. So let me just say this. The first mistake Konatsky makes, one man's opinion, is he should have milked it. There are ways to milk it. In other words, there are ways to get valuable time to clear your head. Right? You're on the canvas. You know you've been knocked down. The referee thinks it's a slip. Rather than pop right up, while you're still shaky on your legs, while you still don't have your equilibrium. I thought Konatsky should have, you know, wiped his gloves on the canvas, right? That's a move, you know, lean on a glove, take your time getting up. Maybe even act like you've hurt a knee or something. We know your knees are fine, but understand, you've just been dropped. You're trying to get, oh, four, five extra seconds before you continue fighting. Many trainers tell their fighter, if you hit the canvas, stay down. Take eight seconds. Right? Clear your head. Here, Konatsky doesn't do that. He doesn't force the referee to wipe his gloves. He doesn't spit out his mouthpiece to buy time. Right? I'm just telling you, boxing's a tough sport. He's clearly buzzed by a short right hook. He gets up right away. He's still shaky on his feet. I thought his failure to milk it a little bit, keep in mind it's ruled a slip. If he looked like he hurt his knee, if he leans on his trunks, then he could say to the ref, hey, you want to wipe my hands? Those few extra seconds might have allowed him to clear his head. The second mistake he makes, he's a hunter. He's accustomed to collapsing the pocket. He's the guy who looks for you. The problem is he wasn't prepared to clinch. You're looking at Hellenius, who predictably is coming forward after he's hurt Konatsky, right? He's trying to end the fight. He's coming forward. Konatsky, and you know, tries to trade with him. This is why he's shaky. This is why he clearly is off balance. Floyd Mayweather, I'll name a great fighter here, when he got buzzed by Shane Mosley, literally grabbed Mosley's hand, wouldn't let it go. Folks, you're trying to buy time here. You've been buzzed. You're trying to clear your head so you can finish the round. 
right? I've seen other guys just run forward and grab you around the waist, literally fall into you. Konotsky doesn't clinch, doesn't even really try to clinch. Robert Hellenius. So here he is, shaky, right in front of Hellenius. Another problem, too, is he's front foot heavy. Those are the plans. He's hurt here, right? Some guys would have moved away from Hellenius. Understand, Hellenius was having a lot more success with his right hand than he was his left hand. Circle away from his right hand. Circle him. Try to walk around the ring. I don't care how ridiculous it looks. Some guys will run away from you. Just to buy time. Just to clear their head. Let me also suggest something else. And I know this is anathema. Keep in mind. The first knockdown is ruled a slip. Konatsky gets back up. He's shaky, right? You see he looks shaky. Folks, take a knee. You want to milk the clock. Milk it off the slip. Then when you get up and the guy comes inside, right? Roll away from him. Take a knee. That would be counted as the first knockdown of the round. Not only that, in a fight like this where Konatsky lands 81 punches, heavyweight fight, in the first three rounds. Chances of this fight going the distance were slim. Right? That Chris Ariola fight was really an outlier type thing. So if I'm Konotsky, especially after banking, in my opinion, the first three rounds, right? If I'm him, I'm not worried about this round being a 10-8 round or a 10-7 round. If I get off the canvas after something that's called a slip and I have a puncher who just hurt me, hunting me down, and if I'm not in a position to clinch him, and if I'm too shaky to move away from him, why not turn my back to him and take a knee? Right? Take the eight count. What you're trying to do is to just buy time, just to get your wits about you, to continue the fight. He doesn't take a knee, right? He's, he doesn't move away. He doesn't circle toward Hellenius' non-dominant hand, right? He doesn't clench Hellenius. He doesn't milk time on the canvas. Where does that leave him? That leaves him in trouble. So understand, he goes down hard, right after the slip. He actually gets knocked down. He doesn't even milk that knockdown, right? The mouthpiece never comes out of his mouth. He doesn't do anything to milk it. It's as if unbeaten fighter, and this is why unbeaten guys have a little bit of risk involved. You almost want a guy who's faced adversity, who's been knocked down by whoever, right? Zab Judah in Floyd Mayweather's case, a guy who's had a tough fight, right? Steve Cunningham with Tyson Fury. You, you almost want a guy who's been knocked down, a guy who's faced adversity, Deontay Wilder against Luis Ortiz, the first fight. Referee almost stops the fight. That adversity leads guys to ask questions. Right? To say to themselves, okay, Anthony Joshua goes down against Vladimir Klitschko. Joshua doesn't get off the canvas and decide he's going to continue to try to trade with Klitschko. No, he actually puts his hands up. This is something Konachki doesn't do. Puts his hands up, hides his head, understands, look, this round is over. I've lost it on the scorecard. Right? You don't want to be the fighter who gets embarrassed 
who feels, okay, he knocked me down, I have to knock him down. How does that work out when your equilibrium's still off? When you can barely stand? So understand the sequence here. He gets knocked down the first time. They rule it a slip. He gets up right away. Right, right away. Hellenius comes over, starts to hit him again. He goes down. They rule that a knockdown. He gets up way too fast there. There's no spitting out the mouthpiece. There's no, you know, wiping his gloves on the canvas. Understand how you do that. You just get up and you lean on one glove and... He could have directed the ref's attention to the gloves, right? He could have said, you know, he could have looked at it, could have said, hey, wipe my gloves, right? The ref would wipe the gloves on himself and then would continue the fight. Understand, every second counts. Kanatsky doesn't do that. So it's a slip, then he gets knocked down, then he gets off the canvas, and you know what? He's still trying to throw with Robert Hellenius. Understand, he's never out of range for Hellenius' right hand. He's right in front of Hellenius, right? He's not trying to move away, run away, right? Get behind Hellenius. He's not doing vet moves like turn his back on Hellenius to kind of slow the fight down. And this is a fight he's winning, right? Understand, a 10-7 round in the fourth round, to me, would have led to an even fight on the scorecards in a fight in which Kanatsky had banked a lot of body shots. So what you have here is an unbeaten fighter who didn't have a reason to develop his survival skills. He gets caught, his equilibrium throws him off, he has a lot of pride, he gets off the canvas right away. Wrong move. The other guy knows he's badly hurt him, his equilibrium's clearly off. When he goes down the second time, he goes down so hard, you notice his legs kick up, he rolls on his back. But again, he gets up far too fast. This is the opposite of Tyson Fury getting up in the 12th round against Deontay Wilder. Understand there, Fury from the canvas, right? After, by his own admission, being out a few seconds. From the canvas, Fury looks up, gets on a knee, makes eye contact with Jack Reese, right? Makes eye contact with that referee. Then Fury gets up. You know how the ref comes over and says, hey, you know, do you want to continue? Are you okay? Sometimes they, you know, quiz you a little bit. They'll say, walk to me and stuff like that. If you need time, you appreciate that. <laughs> right? Because that gives you valuable extra seconds. Here, Kanatsky doesn't set it up. Right? He just doesn't. He suffered his first loss. Understand this changes things big time in the heavyweight division because I believe this guy's fight style would have made him difficult for Anthony Joshua, for Deontay Wilder, for Tyson Fury. Well now, right, now he's lost. Hellenius is the mandatory right? The top fighters now can avoid this guy. It's valid for a champion to say, hey, I'm going to fight the guy who beat him. Not him. And of course, because of the way the belts are, Kubrat Pulev is a mandatory, Usyk's out there, right? Now Hellenius is out there. By the time that sorts itself through, Dylan White is out there, by the time that sorts itself through, I'm guessing now another 12 to 18 months will have passed. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.